seventh grade illustrative mathematics unit seven lesson 14 surface area of right prisms problem number one edge lengths are given in units find the surface area of each prism in square units this side or base has the dimensions five by eight and so does the one directly underneath it the surface area of each of these is 40 units squared the dimensions for these sides are 5 by 10, so the surface area for each of these sides will be 50 units squared. The dimensions for these last two sides are 8 by 10, so each of these two sides will have the surface area of 80 units squared. Add up each of these surface areas and you'll have the surface area for the entire prism. The surface area for prism A is 340 units squared. Prism B. These triangular bases have the dimensions 8 by 6, but remember they're triangles. If we were to find the surface area of each triangle, we would do 1 half times 8 times 6, or 1 half of 8 times 6. However, there are two triangles, so we can treat these two triangles the same way we can treat one rectangle. 8 times 6 is 48, so the two triangles combined have a surface area of 48 units squared. The dimensions for this side are 6 by 15, so the surface area for this side would be 90 units squared. The dimensions for this side are 8 by 15, so the surface area for this side would be 120 units squared. And finally, the dimensions for this last side are 10 by 15, so the surface area for this side would be 150 units squared. Add all the surface areas for each of the sides and you'll have the surface area for the prism. The surface area for prism B is 408 units squared. Prism C, the dimensions for these two sides are five by four. Each of their surface areas would be 20 units squared. The dimensions for these two sides are five by 13. Each of their surface areas are 65 units squared. And the dimensions for these sides are 4 by 13, so their surface areas will be 52 units squared. Add up the surface areas for each of the sides, and you'll have the surface area for the entire prism. The surface area for prism C is 274 units squared. Prism D. This side has the dimensions 5 by 8, so its surface area would be 40 units squared. This side has the dimensions 8 by 13, so its surface area is 104 units squared. The dimensions for this side are 8 by 12, so its surface area is 96 units squared. And finally, the top and bottom base, which is in the shape of a triangle. The dimensions are 5 by 12. We could figure out their individual surface area by multiplying half times base times height, or we could just treat these two triangles as one rectangle, which would be 5 times 12. The combined area of these two bases is 60 units squared. Add up all these surface areas, and you'll have the surface area for prism D, which is 300 units squared. Prism E. This prism has two sides that are 5 by 12, one side that's 6 by 12, and two triangular bases, each with a base of 6 units and a height of 4 units. Add up all of these surface areas and you'll have the total surface area for prism E. The total surface area for prism E is 216 units squared. Problem number 2. Priya says, no matter which way you slice this rectangular prism, the cross section will be a rectangle. May says, I'm not so sure. Describe a slice that May might be thinking of. She might be thinking of making parallel slices, like these two examples. But May might be thinking about just slicing off a corner, like this example. And the cross section is in the shape of a triangle rather than a rectangle. Problem number three. B is the intersection of line AC and line ED. Find the measure of each of the angles. 
A. The measure of angle ABF. The information tells us that angle ABE is 110 degrees and angle EBF is 20 degrees. If we add those together, we can see that angle ABF is 130 degrees. B. The measure of angle ABD. I know that the measure of angle EBD is 180 degrees, and it tells us that angle ABE is 110 degrees. 180 degrees minus 110 degrees gives us the missing measure of angle ABD. So the measure for angle ABD is 70 degrees. C. The measure of angle EBC. We can use this information and see that ABC is 180 degrees, ABE is 110 degrees. It also tells us EBF is 20 degrees. 180 minus 110 minus 20 equals 50. That means angle FBC is 50 degrees. 50 degrees plus 20 degrees equals 70 degrees. So the angle for EBC is 70 degrees. D, the measure of angle FBC. Well, we just figured that out in the last one. 110 degrees plus 20 degrees plus 50 degrees equals 180 degrees. The measure of angle FBC is 50 degrees. E, the measure of angle DBG. We already figured out the measure for angle ABD, which is 70 degrees, and the measure for angle GBC is 65. So 180 degrees minus 70 degrees minus 65 degrees equals 45 degrees. So the measure of angle DBG is 45 degrees. Problem number four. Write each expression with fewer terms. A. 12m minus 4m. 12m minus 4m is 8m. B. 12m minus 5k plus m. That's the same as 12m plus 1m, which is 13m. 13m minus 5k. C. 9m plus k minus 3m minus 2k. This minus sign goes to both the terms inside the parentheses. So 3m becomes negative 3m, and negative 2k becomes positive 2k. It's like saying the opposite of negative 2k. The opposite of negative 2k is positive 2k. Now we can combine like terms. 9m minus 3m is 6m, and 1k plus 2k is 3k. So the expression now reads 6m plus 3k. Problem number 5. A. Find 44% of 625 using the facts that 40% of 625 is 250 and 4% of 625 is 25. 44% is 40% plus 4%. The information tells us that 40% of 625 is 250, and 4% of 625 is 25. So we can add 250 and 25. We get 275. That means that 44% of 625 is 275. B. What is 4.4% of 625? 4.4% is 10 times smaller than 44%. So our answer is going to be 10 times smaller than 275. 4.4% of 625 is 27.5. C. What is 0.44% of 625? 0.44% is 100 times smaller than 44%. So our answer is going to be 100 times smaller than 275. 0.44% of 625 is 2.75. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time.